Hello all. Today we will cover simulating physics on static mesh objects. We will use blueprint interfaces, timers, physics simulation, and a spawning actor to make this happen. Let's jump in. In a new level, we'll open up our content drawer, right click, and first let's make all of our actors. We'll make five. First, let's make a blueprint class of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore physics object. This will be the object that we are simulating physics on. We'll duplicate this and call this BP underscore physics object spawner. This will be the parent blueprint that spawns the object in space. Let's right click again and we'll go to blueprints and create a blueprint interface. I'll call this BPI underscore physics operations. I will right click and create a Niagara system. I will do a new system from selected emitter, hit next, and I will do an omnidirectional burst. I will press plus and then finish. I'll call this NS underscore uh, death system. And for my final object, I will create another blueprint. So I'll duplicate one of my blueprints over here and I'll call this BP underscore kill zone. So before we get started, the way these will interact is I will spawn a physics object. So I will spawn a BP physics object from the physics object spawner. When it moves through the environment, Eventually, it will hit a kill zone, which will be a collision volume. The kill zone will test if the blueprint uses a blueprint interface, which is what we've created here, and we will call a function on it. And the physics object will then spawn a particle system and then destroy itself. So let's jump into how that logic is coded. First, we'll start with our physics object. We'll double click into our physics object to open it up. And in the components panel in the top left, we will add a static mesh. We'll select the mesh, make sure it's selected in the components panel. And for right now, we will add a cube. This can be any mesh and what we're going to do is actually randomize it. So, but we want to make sure that we can have a mesh here so that we can simulate physics. First in the details panel, we'll type simulate and the boolean simulate physics is unchecked, we will select checked. After doing that immediately, we can go into our environment and we can drag a physics object out and we'll press play and we'll see that it now bounces from the ground. You can ignore those other meshes that just came out. Um, so now that we have that working, let's add some more logic. On even begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to randomize the mesh from an array of meshes that we will populate. So on event begin play, we'll drag off and we will say set static mesh. And so this is going to set a new mesh asset to this mesh component. We'll pull off of here and say random array item. And then we'll pull off this array and we'll say promote to variable. We'll call this mesh uh, array choices. We'll hit compile. And then we'll hit this X, X button up here in the details panel. We'll drop down. And so now we need to populate some options into our meshes. So we'll use the basic um, Unreal Assets, we'll use a cube, we'll use a sphere, we'll use a cone, and we'll use a cylinder. So now, on Event Begin Play, what it's going to do is it's going to take our static mesh component, and it will select a random mesh from the array we've provided, and it will set that value to the mesh. All right. Next, let's add an event to our blueprint interface. 
Next, let's spawn the item using the spawner we've created. We'll open up our physics object spawner. We'll hit open full blueprint editor. And on event begin play, what we're going to do is we'll create a timer. So I'll pull off here and say set timer by event. I will pull off the delegate here and say create event. Before creating that event, I'll say we want this event to happen randomly. So I'll pull off of our time variable and I'll say random float in range. Min will be our minimum amount of time and I will say one, two, five. So actually what we'll do one to three. So between one and three seconds, uh, we will spawn a mesh and then we'll loop it so it keeps happening. And now let's create the event. So I'll call this spawn object. And I will pull off here and say spawn actor from class. I will find my physics object and I'll just use the gray arrow here to select that. We'll pull off our default scene root and I'll say get world location. I'm going to pull off my spawn actor node and say make transform. And I'll pull off of rotation and say random rotator. And I'll set roll to true. And I'll pull my loca location into here. So now what I've done here, let's recap on the spawner on event begin play. I will set a timer, which will create a looping timer because I've selected the looping bool. And then every one to three seconds, it will fire this event, spawn object. So I select that in the drop down. So then we look down here and we'll spawn the object and we'll spawn an actor of this class type, which is our physics object, at the location of the spawner with a random rotation. What we'll also do is we will at event begin play. Let's give it a random scale value. So let's make a vector. And up here, you notice we're using the random float and range. If we were to do that here, it would give each of these values a distinct value because it's selecting a random float value each time, not providing the same value to uh, one, uh, one value to the three different uh, X, Y, and Z floats. So what we'll do is we'll choose the float up here. We'll promote this to a variable, this random float and range, and we'll say scale value. And we'll set that here. And we'll say between one and two. And then down here, we already have this make vector. So I'll drag off my scale value here. Say get scale value. Drag that into X, Y, and Z. Let's test out the updated spawner functionality. Let's drag our spawner object into the environment. We'll place three of them. And we should see that it will spawn a randomized scale, rotation, and mesh at these locations on the timer. Great. Let's continue. Great. Now that we've tested that, let's add some logic to the blueprint interface so that we can call a function which will let us kill the physics objects once they fall into a particular particular collision volume. I'll double click into my physics operation BPI, my blueprint interface, and I will take this function that we already have and I'll rename it kill object in physics volume. I'll save that. I'll go up to my physics object. I'll click into my class settings and I will implement an interface. So I'll click here where it says add and I'll search for my physics operation interface, which now allows me to call this function. So the use of an interface is that I can put this interface on many different types of blueprints and call this without requiring a cast. So I'll right click this and I'll say implement event. And basically once I, so this is when the physics object overlapped the collision volume from the collision volume 
I'll call this event and destroy this actor. So first, I'll say spawn system at location. And this is where I'm going to spawn my Niagara part particle system. So I'll select this and I'm going to arrow it in here instead of searching. I'll get my static mesh. I'll say get world location. And that should be good. Then after this, I will say destroy actor, which will kill this blueprint. So I'll add a comment around this and I'll say destroy this actor. I'll add a comment around this and say set random mesh just to keep things clean. And now let's add our kill volume. I'll go into my BP underscore kill zone. And I will add a box collision. I'll right click this and I'll say add event, add on component begin overlap. On other actor, I will call the event which is kill object in physics volume. So I'll say kill object in physics volume. And you'll see this says target is BPI physics operation. So this isn't going to be a cast like you'd often say. Um, we're going to basically tell this actor, if you implement this interface, do this operation. You can also pull off here and say does implement interface and use our physics operation, but this does that under the hood. So we'll say kill objects in physics volume, and that will call the event which we've just created here. So now let's set up an environment and test this out. I'll delete these objects and let's add some shapes. I'll add a cube and I'll duplicate it. I'll rotate this one. I'll rotate this one. And we'll duplicate these one more time. Scale these a little bit. And let's add some of our spawner objects. So up at the top, I'm going to duplicate these. I'm doing an alt drag to duplicate these while I move the gizmo. And I'm actually going to change the time on my spawner to make them spawn a little bit faster. So I'll make my random timer float between one and two seconds. And then I will add a kill volume to the bottom. So I'll set the size in my volume itself at 2000 by 2000. And I'm going to drag one into the environment. And basically this just means that, you know, I'm trying to make it that these objects don't live forever. So I'm, I'm going to scale this up a little bit. When objects are simulating physics for, you know, it is, can be a hit on performance. So we don't want to sort of waste our computer's power and we are going to optimize where we can. So I'm going to put a little platform right over here so I can watch it as a player. And let's see what this does. I'll press play right here. And I'm going to start to see my objects tumbling down the path. And when they hit the bottom, we'll see they hit the volume and dissipate in a particle poof. And we'll just see them flowing out of the spawners. Now, just for fun, let's turn up some of these values and spawn a lot of physics actors in the environment. So I'm going to move this down. So they have a little more time to fall. So I'm going to change my spawner. I'm going to say every 
0.25 to 0.5. Let's add twice the amount of spawners. I'm going to duplicate these. I'm going to select them, and I'll duplicate them. Let's do three times the spawners. Why not? It's a lot of physics simulation. So what's nice now is, I mean, I guess a bunch of them are kind of missing the kill volume, but, you know, we're killing the actors, which is great, so there's not infinity objects simulating physics, but that's pretty cool. That's all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something. Stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content.